In this video, I'm going to talk about the throttle first operator with RX Java on Android in particular. Uh, and this is this is going to be an operator that uh, if my mic's kind of in a weird position, it's going to be an operator that you're going to get a lot of use out of in Android development because it's uh, it's a it solves a really common problem, um, which is button spamming or uh, input spamming, I guess you could call it also. What happens when a user presses a button a whole bunch of times before the operation is complete or before the task uh, is complete? That's kind of what this uh, what this operator does really well. So the, the example that I have here is uh, restricting button spamming. And uh, that's going to be, so what, what it's going to do is it will, uh, I guess looking at the diagram might be useful. So say this is a click right here, this red dot, that's when they click. You, you want to make sure that some time elapses before we can accept more input, basically. So supposing this yellow is a click, it starts the throttle first operation. Uh, they click it again, which is the representation of the green click. Notice it doesn't get passed, it doesn't get emitted. So it's basically saying, nope, you clicked it with too quickly, we're not going to register that click. That's, a, that's essentially what we're gonna do in this example. So uh, again, we're gonna be using the Jake Wharton RX binding library. I talked about that in the debounce operator and the debuff operator, also, or the buffer operator also. So if you, uh, if you don't know what that is, you can get the dependency right here. I have it right here. I've already added it to my project, so I'm not gonna be adding it again on camera here. Um, next uh, is the layout. So the layout's gonna be very simple. Just a, uh, just a button and a constraint layout, nothing fancy here. I've already got that in Android Studio, as you can see and uh, nothing is in main activity, but we're about to add the code to that. So coming on down, we uh, can get the code for main activity. Uh, once again, I have the disposables, I have a button, so I'm just gonna copy this UI stuff, go into Android Studio and paste that in. So I have my button, my disposables, along for keeping track of the time since the previous click. So I'm just pasting those in. Uh, and then in on create, I have a whole bunch that I'm gonna copy right here. So I'm copying Actually, I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get on destroy and then some method first. So I'm copying those, going to Android Studio, pasting them in. Some method just resets the time since last request. It's a method that's meant to show just do nothing basically. I'm gonna be using it as a demonstration for demonstration purposes. And on destroy, we we want to clear the observables uh, like always. We don't want any observers left if the activity is destroyed. So now back to the lecture. I'm going to get the rest of the code in on create. Uh, so I'll just copy it all the way up to the button. You can get all this code on the lecture on my website, of course, uh, pasting that in and we have all the code and I'm gonna go through it. So what's happening here? First of all, I'm attaching uh, the ID to the button in question. I'm setting the time since last request just to set the initial time before the request starts. Then I'm using the RX view class like I did in the, I believe it was the, the buffer lecture. Uh, yeah, it was. I'm pretty sure it was the buffer lecture, which is uh, an operator uh, from the RX, or sorry, it's a class from the RX binding library, Jake Warren's library, that basically attaches or interprets on click events to views, in this case a button, and transfers it into an observable form. So it's it's like making button clicks observable so that then we can apply operators to them and do stuff to them. So it's a very, very, very convenient library. Uh, it just makes things easier because otherwise we would have had to do what we did in the previous lecture, the debounce lecture, uh, which was do it the old fashioned way, which was create, you know, create the observable manually, and then set the on on click or on touch or on text, whatever listener inside of the subscribe method, which is quite a bit more code, as you can see, and it looks a lot uglier, and a lot more intimidating. So it's really, really great. This library that Jake Wharton made uh, makes things a lot easier for us as developers. So now, uh, now that we have a way to detect the clicks with thanks to Jake Wharton, we can then just simply apply the throttle first operator, which is very simple, uh, set a window duration of 500 milliseconds or whatever amount of time you want, uh, specify a time unit, and that's pretty much it. You're, you're basically what you're saying is detect clicks to this button, but before emitting them, before you know, basically registering the clicks, uh, make sure that 500 milliseconds has elapsed. And then uh, the on next method would trigger. And then you could, I have, you know, some method in here just simulating what you would want to do if a button clicked. Uh, you could be like, you know, displaying a toast, whatever. Just, I'll just say, I'll just display some toast. You clicked the button and do exclamation mark. And now I'm going to run it and I'll show you that uh, we won't be able to get that toast printing out for any time, uh, 
uh, fewer than 500 milliseconds. So 500 milliseconds must elapse basically. So if I click that, that's fine. That clicks, that, that shows, but uh, watch what happens if I spam it. It's actually still showing because I have, uh, the toast is still on the screen at the time that the, uh, uh, that the toast is still on the screen. So I need to increase the time. So I'm gonna increase this time to like 4,000 milliseconds because that way the toast will have faded so that, because right now it, it's not a good demonstration. The toast is just staying on the screen. So I'll click it, it will stay on the screen. I'll click it a whole bunch of times. I'm still clicking it, you see it fades. Four seconds passes and it, and it goes up again, it fades again. And so I'm sure you get the idea. So it's making sure that 4,000 uh, milliseconds passes, which you can see from the log output before triggering the on next method. So pretty cool. Definitely really great for uh, making sure that your users don't spam things and, you know, break things potentially. Um, but yeah, that's it for this video. I've already done the flat map video. So um, continue on to that lecture and check that out. Uh, and then after that, we're going to be doing the concatenation op or the concat map operator.